coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. When we have faith, it gives us the ability to see supernaturally. Can you see it? Faith also gives us spiritual understanding. In fact, faith opens our hearts and the eyes of our understanding so that we can peer into the realm of the Spirit. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the sanctuary of Warhol Harvest Church North. I'm so excited about today's message. It's brand new. It's entitled, Can You See It? Before God spoke in Genesis 1, he already saw it happening. Get out the scripture. Go with me. And let's hear it. Can you see it? Isaiah 46, beginning with verse 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning. Say that with me. Declaring the end from the beginning. So he knows what's going to happen in the end, in the beginning of it, right? And from ancient times, <coughs> things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, you and I are created in the image and likeness of God, are we not? Are you able to see the end of something that is just beginning in your life? Hey, y'all, when did you sneak in? Surprise me. Before the first seed was planted in the earth, God knew what the tree and the fruit would look like. Let me say that again. Before the first seed was planted in the earth, God knew what the tree and the fruit would look like. He knew what the fruit of the tree would do for the human body. Now, you may not think that this principle is important or relevant to you, but hold on. The boss comes in and suddenly fires you without explanation. You ever been there, done that? The doctor gives you a terminal report on your health. But these don't matter if you have already gotten a vision from the Lord about your end. Yeah. Jeremiah 29, 11. He's, he's going to give you a hope and a future and expect it in, right? So it does not matter what the enemy, what the roaring lion says, as long as you've already gotten a word and a vision from God. Without a vision, as people perish, they cast off restraint. We are created in an image and likeness of God. We should have vision. We should know things. If God be for us, who can be against us? Now, God is a visionary. If he can see the end from the beginning, then he's a visionary, is he not? He has created us to also be visionaries. But not everyone has activated their faith through God's word so they can see it. Can you see it? Turn with me to Isaiah 55. Let's see how to get the matter out of our eyes so we can see what God sees the way God sees it. It matters in this world. There's so much negativity and evil, doubt, fear, and unbelief. We, we need to see as God sees, right? So we don't act like the heathens here on this earth. Now, Isaiah 55, God is speaking to his nation. He says, surely... You shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return to the Lord, and he will uh, have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Verse 8. For my thoughts, God said, are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Now, he's talking to a rebellious Israel here. He's not saying we can't know God's ways or God's thoughts. It says in rebellion, you won't know them. 
because you're not walking, you're not pursuing his ways. He says in uh, Hebrews 3, talking about Israel, says, they always go astray in the heart for they have not known my ways. It is possible for us to know the ways of God. It says in Psalm 103 that the children of Israel knew the acts of God. They saw his miracles, but Moses spent time with him. He got, Moses knew the ways of God. Now, man, mankind operates backwards to God's M.O. or modus operandi. In the kingdom of God, if you want to move up, what do you got to do? Humble yourself. If you want to receive, you must what? Be willing to give. God has chosen to operate this way to demonstrate to us, his people, and to Satan that he is God and there is no God like him. He does things totally opposite of us. Now turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. How many is hoping for something? We're all hoping for something. The evidence of things not seen. Though you don't see it, you have evidence that you will see it through faith, right? So faith gives us spiritual vision, does it not? For by it the elders obtained a good report or testimony. By faith we understand. So faith gives us what? Understanding. That the worlds were framed, made by what? The word of God, so that the things which are seen were made of things which are visible. Now drop down to verse 7. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not seen, not yet seen. Now uh, look at that. He is being warned by God of things that he does not yet see, is moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is according to what? Faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance, and he went out. But look how he went out, not knowing where he was going. And to this day, men still drive around in circles while their wife says, won't you stop and ask somebody where we're going? I didn't mention anybody's names, but I'm sure it'll come up on Facebook. Drop down to verse 13. These all died, how? In faith, but what? Not having received the promises, but having what? Seen them, where? Afar off were what? Assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. By faith they died, they died in faith. They had not received the promises, but they, they still embraced them. They confessed them, though they were strangers on earth. Now, these people all had one thing in common in the hall of faith here in chapter 11. Their faith gave them the ability to see what God was saying to them in the spirit. But these things weren't visible to any of them in the natural realm. When we place our faith in Jesus as the Christ, God can show us things about ourselves and the work we're called to do to perform on the earth without us ever seeing it in the natural realm. Hang with me. We've got a lot to lay on you today. Noah built an ark and never saw one drop of rain until the ark was complete and God's time was fulfilled. Think about that. Never seeing a drop of rain. Builds the, builds the ark out in the middle of probably desertness or wilderness. And, and, and people are walking around saying, what are you doing? Have you lost your mind? What is that monstrosity? He did it by faith. He saw something. God told him how to build it, right? He gave him the dimensions. He told him what kind of materials to use. And it worked. Imagine that. And they built the Titanic by experts. When we have faith, it gives us the ability to see supernaturally. Can you see it? Faith also gives us spiritual understanding. In fact, faith opens our hearts and the eyes of our understanding so that we can peer into the realm of the Spirit. 
Now, Paul, John the Revelator, and Daniel, who wrote a lot of the end-time prophecies, in particular John the Revelator and Daniel, they saw so many things that were unlawful for them to speak or talk about with human understanding, so God sealed a lot of what God had showed them until the time for them to be revealed. Now, think about that. God revealed these things to them that when they came back into the natural body or the natural realm, they said it is unlawful for us. God has sealed it up. Now look in Ephesians chapter 1. Faith gives us the ability to see into the Spirit and to understand spiritual things. Let's take it a little deeper. Ephesians 1.15 Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith, of your what? There it is again. And who? Anybody? Only in one person. In the Lord Jesus and the love for all the saints, I do not cease. Now, this is an apostle, one of the fivefold ministers. He says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, mention, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may what? Give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. It's not enough to believe in him. You want, you want to know him. And the only way you're going to do that is through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, right? And so Paul was asking continuously for God to grant these new believers in Ephesus the, the eyes, that their uh, eyes of their understanding would be enlightened through their faith in Christ that they could come to know Jesus Christ, whom they believe in, and their heavenly Father. Now, it was after the believers in Ephesus had come to faith in Christ that Paul prayed that God would give them the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Christ and the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. Why do you want that to happen? So that you can know what God's plan is for your life. What he wants you to do for his kingdom. Right? Are you interested in what God wants for your life more than what you want for it? All right. These things aren't taught nearly enough in the body of Christ. Faith does far more than get us into salvation. That is just the beginning. That is the op that's the, the first day on the job, y'all. Faith gives us the ability for God to convey or reveal His secrets to us while bypassing our human understanding of brain. Think about that. Now, turn with me to John chapter 20. Let's see how this works. John 20 verse 25. Jesus has uh, now appeared to his disciples and Thomas was gone. Now he comes back eight days later and he appears to them and Thomas is there. And Thomas is a man of faith and power and says, I won't believe it until I see it. Pick it up in verse 25. And the other disciples therefore said to him, witnessing to Thomas about them seeing Jesus, we have seen the Lord. So he said to them, unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after days, eight days, uh, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here, look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it in my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Now look at Jesus' response. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. But blessed are those who have not seen, but yet have believed. This is a principle of faith. Man says, remember, God's MO is different than man's. Man's ways are way lower than God's ways, or man's thoughts are lower than God's thoughts. Man says, I will believe something when I see it with my eyes. In God's kingdom, it works just the opposite. You won't be able to see what God is showing you until after you believe what he is saying to you. I'm going to break that down. I believe it when I see it. You'll never see it. Because you've got to hear what he's saying. He's alive. You've got to believe what he's saying. And when you believe what you're saying, he'll give you spiritual eyes to see what you cannot see. Now you're with me. It is faith that gives us sight to see into the things of the Spirit and not our eyes. 
Thomas made the mistake. Well, if I see it, then I will come to faith in it. God says it does not work with that because eyes, listen to me, eyes do not have anything to do with faith. Because faith is connected to the spiritual heart, not the eye sockets. Can I get a witness? So I want to present a couple of conundrums to you today. They're found in the Bible. They're perplexing, confusing uh, statements. Look there in First Genesis, uh, Genesis, Genesis 1, verse 3. Genesis 1, verse 3. Then God said, let there be light, and what? There was light. Imagine that. And God what? He saw it. He said it first, and then he saw it. So the word comes first, and then the manifestation comes second. You say it, then you see it. God saw the light, and it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Now, how did God create the heavens and the earth? Did he do something first? Or did he speak what he wanted to see first? He spoke what he was seeing inside of him. He spoke it out his mouth so that he could see it with his eyes. It had to start in him first. He had to speak everything he wanted to create with the word. Why? Hebrews just said that the word of God framed the worlds. God spoke it, then he saw it. Drop down to verse 9. Then God said, let the waters under the waters be gathered together into one place and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters he called the seas. And God said it was good. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb the, uh, that yields seed and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was good. And the earth brought forth grass and the herb that yields seed according to its kind and three that fruit, uh, yields fruit whose seed is in itself, God saw it was good, and, and the evening and the morning were the what? The third day. Consistently, throughout creation, the six days of creation, God spoke first, and then he would see what he had spoken, right? Drop down to verse 24, uh, chapter 1. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creatures according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and the beast of the earth, each according to its kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the field, earth according to its kind, according, uh, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. God saw that it was good. And then he said, Let us make man in our own image and our likeness according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle, over all the things on the earth, and everything that creeps on the face of the earth. Right? According to the chronological order of God's creation plan being fulfilled, the animals appeared before man. He created the, the, uh, the animals, and they appeared. And then he said, let us make man after our image and our likeness. Chronological order, right? The animals appeared in chapter 1 before the man. Here's the conundrum. Go to chapter 2, verse 4. This is a different account of what happened in chapter 1 that Moses is, is going back and recounting it and giving us the breakdown of how it was really carried out on earth. Chapter uh, 2, verse 4. This is the history of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Creation comes from nothing but the spoken word. In the day that the Lord God, what? Made. Made is, is, comes from something created. So God spoke it, and then he had to make it. Are you with me? Now, these are the, the generations when God created the heavens and the earth. Now look at verse 5. Before any plant of the field was in the earth, before any herb of the field was in the ground, so how lush was the earth in this uh, account of Moses looking on the earth. How lush was the earth? There was nothing. Say nothing. It was bare. Why? Because the word says so. Before any plant was in the field or was in the earth and before any herb of the field was grown, for the God, Lord God had not caused it to rain on the earth and he did not let it rain until Noah's day, right? And there, why was that? Because there was no man on the earth to till the ground. So first things first, 
right? Well, I want God to give me a bank account. I want him to give me this. I want him to give me that. And then I'll step out and do what he wants me to do. God does not walk, work that way. He takes you into a place of nothingness, and he gives you one word and says, now get a hole and go start digging. But a mist went up out of the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils, and man became a, a living being. So the Lord planned a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put man whom he had formed. This is a different account of the things that God showed Moses to write about in Genesis 1. On the third day of creation in chapter 1, it's recorded that God spoke the plant life into being, and he saw it, and he was pleased, right? But when Moses gives the account where the Lord God made the things that God had spoken into being, the plants haven't been planted because there was no man on the earth to cultivate the earth, right? When was man created? Day six. Right? Right? But wait, he, it says he, he, he spoke the plants, life, the plants, the, the trees, and the fruit into being in day three. But in day six of the other account in chapter two, it's not done yet. So there's the conundrum, right? There's a contradiction. Turn with me to uh, Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a helper comparable to him. Out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to who? Wow. Wait a minute. I thought Genesis 1 said he, he, he spoke into being the, the beast of the field and all the animals. And then he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. But here it says that Adam was already there. And then God went and brought them out of the ground and formed them. And then brought them to Adam to see what Adam would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Here's another conundrum. In chapter 1, God spoke animal life into being before he spoke man into existence. Yet in this account in chapter 2, where the Lord God made everything from what God has spoken, he formed man first, then he formed the animals and brought them to Adam. Why does it seem that there are contradictions between the order of how the events came into being in chapter 1 versus chapter 2? Remember, God is a visionary. He sees the end of a thing from the beginning, he saw the earth and the animals, what they would look like, what they would do before he created the man who would help the process come into reality. Turn with me to John chapter 1. Now, this isn't Sunday school material. You got to think, right? Why would God put all this stuff on the earth and no one take care of it. He's God. Love is, his, is who he is. It's not what he does. Love is who he is. If he's going to create something, he's going to have somebody there to take care of his creation, right? So why are these things seemingly contradictory? He says, I see it in my spirit in the way that it is, but I'm seeing the end of the thing. Then when he goes to make it, he starts it in the beginning. Here's man. Now that I've got man, I can plant the, the fields. I can cause the trees to come forth. I can bring forth the animals. See? You saw the end of it in the beginning. In chapter 2, you started the beginning to work toward the end. Two different things coming together. Flesh and spirit. All harmonized through the word of God by faith. Isn't that awesome? Now, turn with me to John chapter 1. Let's break it down a little bit more. In the beginning was what? The Word. What did God say? Let there be. He spoke it out of his mouth. And the Word was with God in addition to God. So he was the second person of the Trinity, right? He was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things, how many? All things were what? Not created, but made. 
See, he talked about creation in the beginning, but then he made things from what he had created. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. And in him was life, and the life was the light of men. All things that appear were created by the Father, but made by the Word. Let me say that again because we're going somewhere. All things that appeared were created by the Father. He spoke it into existence. But all things that were made were made by the Word. I just gave you Scripture. All things were made through Him. Who? The Word. Right? Am I contradicting Scripture? Am I preaching heresy? All right. Who was He before He was known as Jesus? He was the Word. Now watch this. In, in chapter 1 of Genesis, Moses wrote Genesis, by the way. Moses tells us, God said, and God said, and God said. But when you read chapter 2 in the account where man is on the earth, when man is formed, the, the plants come into being, and the animals are on the earth, Moses tells us, the Lord God, the Lord God, the Lord God. The Lord God was at work. John chapter 1, verse 18 no one has seen God at any time, only the begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has declared him to us. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 12 says the same thing, bearing witness. Well, I hate to cut it short because there is so much more left to this message that will bring everything together, and I back every bit of it with Scripture. So if you uh, miss part of it or if you'd like to see it in its entirety, you can contact the church office. The information will be on the screen. Uh, let us know the CD or the DVD that you want to order. Give the title. Can you see it? And you will be blessed by this word tremendously because the people in the sanctuary said they loved it. Today we're just so honored to have you a part of this ministry. And we're here to stand with you, not only to minister the word, but to pray for you. If you have any prayer requests, please send those in. You can do that the quickest way via email, prayer at whcnorth.org. And also, I want to invite you, if you're not a, a contributor to this ministry, uh, would you prayerfully consider becoming a part of what God is doing through Keys to Kingdom Living literally around the world. God has given us the ability through satellite to reach so many nations, and to God be the glory for that. But we need people to help us, to help hold our arms up and to help support this ministry so that we can uh, take care of production costs as well as airtime and the other essentials of part of the television ministry so that this message can continue going out to the nations of the world. God uses this ministry to declare the truth out of his word. And as I've said so many times here, he uses the word, and we back it up, everything that I teach, straight out of God's word. That's why we use so many scriptures, because we want your faith to be in Jesus Christ and what he has said, not in what I think or what I believe but in what God has spoken. So as I get ready to leave you today, I want you to be encouraged. Lift up your eyes, look up, for our redemption draws nigh. God bless you. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512.